very good morning. Welcome to Captain CAP Classroom. In our today's class, we'll be learning an important concept called corporate governance. Corporate governance is a concept which is a mixture of two words, corporate and governance. I'm sure most of us would understand what is the meaning of governance. Governance word originated from the word government, which is nothing but set of rule, regulation, policies and procedures through which government is being run, we call that governance. Similarly, when we say corporate governance, corporate governance is nothing but set of rule, regulation, policies and procedure through which a corporate is being governed. It's not that that some external body will come and tell the corporates what to do, what not to do. They will not even tell them how to do their business. The corporate governance is actually related to a concept of transparency. We all understand that Enron was the world's biggest corporate scam so far. The quantum of Enron was as big as $60 billion. Post Enron scam, worldwide accounting bodies got worried about it and they realized that just because a company's financial statements are audited it does not mean that it's transparent it does not mean that all the stakeholders are having the required information and that's where this word came into picture called corporate governance so as we discussed before corporate governance is nothing but set of rule regulation policies and procedures through which a company is being governed, taking care of the interest of stakeholders. A lot of people get confused with two words called stockholder and stakeholder. The stockholder means shareholder or investor. So stockholder, shareholder and investor, these are one of the same person. At the same time, stakeholder is much, much broader concept than stockholder. Stakeholder means everybody and anybody who has direct or indirect interest in the business, we call them stakeholders. Stakeholders could be of three types, internal, external and connected. Internal stakeholders are those stakeholders which are inside the company and they are interested in the business such as an employee, management, these are internal people, but very much interested in the business. Then let's discuss connected stakeholder. Connected stakeholders are those stakeholders who are external to the company, but connected to the business, such as customer, vendor, a lender, stockholder, all these comes under connected stakeholder. And then comes external stakeholder. External stakeholders are those which are absolutely outside the organization, such as government, such as society. These people may be outside for the organization, but very much interested in the company. Combinedly, we call them stakeholder. So now when we understand the difference between stockholder and stakeholder, let's try to understand the concept of corporate governance. The corporate governance says, that the way company runs, there's nothing wrong in working for profit motive. Company can very well work for the objective of profit making. At the same time, they have to be transparent and they have to take care of the interest of stakeholder. They are not just working for shareholder, but stakeholder. Anything which stakeholder should know needs to be published. So when you see the financial statement of companies these days, you see a lot of notes to financial statement. These notes to financial statement are really, really detailed. And that's the outcome of corporate governance. Most of the time when company gets its financial statement audited, may possible that management and auditor will collide with each other. And that's where they will choose what to tell, they choose not to tell. That's where corporate governance has given us certain guidelines. If a company follows it, that will be a transparent reporting which not only enhances the confidence of the stockholder, but also give a reputation boost to the company. So let me give you a small hierarchy picture. Not every time company follows the same hierarchy, but it's a recommended hierarchy under corporate governance. 
let's start with somebody who tops the company called chairman chairman is the one who could be a promoter of the business or afterwards somebody else has been appointed as chairman some companies also call them managing directors so chairman is on the top layer of the organization below chairman we have board of directors you may also find one more layer of here called deputy chairman some companies may have some companies may not have we call them deputy chairman then comes board of directors below board of director comes ceo ceo is nothing but a high profile employee of the business and below ceo we have other layers such as cfo cto and other senior executives so these comes under the senior management so when we say senior management in a company we actually talk about this layer the layer below this can be industry specific which may include vice president assistant vice president and so on so let's not discuss the hierarchies below because all the transparency related to reporting actually works here at this top layer if they choose not to disclose there is nobody else who can control it so that is where this particular layer is little bit more crucial than the other layers in the business now when we say owner of the business who do you think is owner of the business the owner of the business are shareholders people who have invested their money are actually the owner of the business then the question arises who is the board of director who is chairman so let's try to understand who are these people what is their role in the organization when i say chairman chairman is top of the hierarchy but he is in to oversight role his task is to sit at the top and see whether the interest of stakeholder is protected or not generally chairman do not participate in day to day operations but whenever they think that things are moving out of their hand or company is not going in the right direction they do intervene so chairman is primarily in to oversight role Before we discuss the task of board of director, let's come to CEO, Chief Executive Officer. <coughs> CEO is an operational person. His task is to make company profitable and run efficiently. So these are the people who owns the number. These are the people who really are responsible for the business profitability. The corporate governance says that the chairman. and ceo should not be same what will happen if ceo and chairman will become a same person the problem will arise the chairman is in oversight role and ceo is in operational role if these two people will become one the interest of stakeholder will go for toss that's why corporate governance says these two people should not be same but there are a lot of worldwide example where these two people were same such as steve job in apples larry page in google as long as they could manage their show properly without any biasness it's fine but otherwise it's not a recommended thing now when we understand that role of chairman and ceo the people below ceo only follow what ceo asks them to do so their task is to comply with the rules and the orders by ceo now let's come to this layer called board of directors these are very very important part of a business shareholder may be owner of the business but somebody who is actually running the show is board of directors we call that board of director because there are couple of directors who sits as a board and these are the people who actually runs the company technically these people are custodian they take care of the money of shareholder they know how to take decisions and these are the people who owns the responsibility of running the company so board of director are very very important part of the business at the same time board of director if they choose not to disclose to outsider there is no other way that people may get to know 
So that means it's actually very crucial that this board of directors need to have transparency. So here, the corporate governance says there type two type of directors should be there: executive directors and non-executive directors. The non-executive directors can also be called NADs. The two type of director: executive director, non-executive director. Let's see who are NADs. What is their task? Now, if I ask you guys, who appoints the auditor in the business? If you go by Company Act, Company Act says that the auditor need to be appointed and reappointed in AGM, annual general meeting. annual general meeting is a meeting where shareholder comes but practically most of the time shareholders do not turn up for agm so who are actually left in agm board so imagine a situation where board appoints me as an auditor i come up with a negative report to the board and board says you cannot publish it do i have any other need to go they are my boss they only appointed me that means my independence as an auditor is over that means there has to be mechanism to protect the independence of an auditor and that's where nads come into picture nads are also called independent directors these are the people who are very very highly reputed in the market they can be from finance domain economics hr or any other domain ideally there has to be equal number in board so the executive director and non executive director needs to be equal numbers ideally nads can be nads in many companies there is no restriction per se reason being they do not participate in day to day operational decisions also nads do not draw salary from the business the moment they start drawing salary they get biased so that means nads only take per meeting fee they do not have any interest and that's where they will not be biased their task is to keep an eye on executive director and their decisions and to maintain the balance in the board and so maintain the transparency below nads there are certain committees there can be lot of committees here we are just talking about three more committees So three committees come below NADs called audit committee, <coughs> remuneration committee, and nomination committee. When I say audit committee, as we just discussed, that auditor need to be independent. There has to be a proper committee, whether it's an internal audit or external audit. this audit committee is headed by a person called cae cae stands for chief audit executive so audit committee is headed by a person called cae chief audit executive his task is to coordinate with auditors be internal or external auditor and he takes the report to the nads and then finally to the board so that means the audit report will be discussed in the board via nads that means the in independence of auditor can be protected here if executive director wants to make any changes they may not be able to do it because they have to justify to nad why why are we making those changes so that's the task of audit committee remuneration committee they decide how much should be the remuneration of executive directors there is nobody who is taking care of the salary part of executive director so if we do not talk about a recommendation or any committee that means the board can draw whatever they want whatever profit they have whatever money they have from the investor they can draw their own salaries there has to be certain controls on it and remuneration committee works on it So this committee will give the recommendation as to how much should be the salary range for this much experience, this much skill set, and so on. They make sure the directors are not overpaid, but at the same time they should not be underpaid either. If they are underpaid, company may not be able to attract the best talent from the market. So that's the task of remuneration committee. 
Then comes the nomination committee. Most of the family run businesses, if you look at their board, there may be some relatives, brothers, sisters, and so on. Not necessarily that they may have a required skill set to run the business. Nomination committee recommend who should be nominated, nominated in the board. What kind of skill set, what kind of knowledge people should possess when they will be hired as board. So these are the tasks of these committees. Nutshell, this is what we call corporate governance. So corporate governance primarily came up with the concept of independent director NAD and the transparency of all the transaction when it comes to board of directors. If you want to really see how practical it looks, I would suggest Google any listed company of your choice and look at their notes to financial statement. You will find all these details what we discuss in their financial statements. Not just the balance sheet and P&L, but the notes to financial statement. You will find all the committee recommendations. You will find the salary of every person in the board, including NADS. Who owns how many shares, what's their salary, how much bonus they are drawing, every detail is published, it's mandatory. Company cannot choose now, they have to do it, it's mandatory. So this is all about the concept of corporate governance. Now when we understood this concept, let me come back to the examination perspective for this chapter called corporate governance. From examination perspective, the chapter is relatively important, not super important though. You should understand the core of corporate governance. Also, this chapter talks about some bodies like Tradeway Commission and some accounting bodies. I would suggest at least have one good read, understand when corporate governance came into picture, what is the core of it and so on. From examination perspective, maybe one or two questions can be asked from this. So that's all about this chapter and the concept called corporate governance. In my next class, I'll come with a new topic. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much.